So I don't know what the temperature is supposed to be, but let's just measure this orange juice. It's looking like, uh, yeah, see that? That's 40, 45 degrees, that can't be right. <laughs> nice glass of cold milk at uh, 47 degrees, 45 degrees. And it's at the coldest setting. Like I said, it's just uh, cranking it up, nothing. And I have a feeling I know what it is. Uh, the freezer side seems to be working fine. There's a it's negative two on that container there. Negative five. Got the freezer set at five, so that thing, this side worked fine. Just this side is uh, warm. Not warm, but yeah, warm. It's supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be cold milk, <laughs> not 45 degree milk. Ah, so this is rolled away from the wall, and clearly it's uh, dirty back here, and that is pretty caked up with dust, and I think that's probably going to be my uh, my problem. But I don't know to make it go to. I mean, I know you're supposed to keep your vents clean, and this is obviously filthy, dirty. Uh, but I can still see through the vent pretty clear. Well, that just fell off piece, but I'm not sure if that's going to be. Uh, enough to stop that from going you know cooling down to uh, 45 degrees but i'm going to clean it up obviously anyways so i took these panels off and just looking around it is pretty dirty in there but the fan is working uh i just shut the fridge off but the fan's working everything seems to be working that thing uh you know is moving or you know vibrating so everything looks like it's working i'm just gonna have to clean everything up so i'm thinking that's my problem but not sure yet so i was looking at the forward one front vents and uh, they're pretty filthy too and you can see uh, it looks like it's caked up I don't know how this thing oh, I guess it just kind of pops uh oh well I have a feeling that's the problem right there <laughs> I mean now uh, we can still see through this a little bit it is filthy definitely needs to be cleaned but I'm pretty damn sure that that piece down here is probably some kind of heat exchanger and it's not supposed to look like an Indian blanket, yeah? So let me clean that up, plug everything back in, clean both sides up, and then uh, let it run for a bit, see what kind of temperature you got. That's gotta be what the problem is, yeah? Well, I guess I'm gonna have to get a vacuum, but there's no one to blame here, but the, oh yeah, that's just, uh, <laughs> it is literally like a blanket of, uh, dust, dirt, maybe some dog hair. I don't know how old this refrigerator is. I do know that I bought this refrigerator. <laughs> so that's the last time it was cleaned. Um, I gotta get in there with a brush or something, obviously a vacuum. So yeah, that looks like some kind of cooling tubes. Yeah, so I got one of these two hickeys that might work. Oh yeah, that'll work. Oh yeah, so this is gonna create quite a mess. I think uh, I'll turn the camera off for a bit. I'm gonna get all this stuff cleaned up and we're gonna try this again, get rid of this cocoon and hopefully everything's fine. Got a majority of the stuff out of here with this brush, which is great. Uh, I don't even know what kind of brush this is, but it just picks the lint up and uh, holds onto it and you could drag it out for the most part. So 98% of the stuff is gone in there. You probably can't see in there, but um, I could see pretty good from this angle. Uh, so I got it all brushed out. I haven't vacuumed it yet, but and I'm still probably going to jack it up just so I can take this brush on the underside of that uh, what looks like a heat exchanger. I'm pretty sure it is. Again, I'm not a, in this field of work. I just can clearly see that this is the problem or a problem. <laughs> all right, so I just loaded this up with uh, some ice packets because cleaning that didn't do the trick. We're still at uh, 45, 46 degrees, and it's not cooling. So. I'm sure that helped cleaning out the dust and uh, you know eight pounds of dirt, but we're still in a pickle here. So I gotta I gotta drag it back out and go find out. I don't know what the next step is, and I'm probably gonna go on YouTube and figure out somebody else's mess and see what I can do with that. All right, so it's been a while, it's been about uh, 45 minutes now. Nothing's changing. Still about 45 degrees in there. Uh, so I went on the old good old YouTube there and I think I've got some direction. So there's some pieces to the puzzle. The, the refrigerator is uh, not cooling as it should. Like I said, it, it seems kind of warm in there and it is 45 degrees. The freezer seems to be working fine. So I'd like to give credit to uh, whatever 
channel I was on, but I was rifling through so many because I, I need to do this in a hurry before everything spoils. And uh, I came up with, um, so the refrigerator part is what I thought was wrong. And I, of course, cleaned out the coils, uh, what I believe is a heat exchanger coil in, in the back there, thinking, yeah, that's the problem. But most things have a cause and effect, right? So uh, two, a couple weeks ago, I just emptied this freezer, just got the contents out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a few moves here. But a couple of weeks ago, the missus said the freezer seemed awful warm and it was wet and drippy. And uh, she called me at work, and then she called back about an hour later. She says, "Never mind, I got it." She she said she said she she turned up the uh, the freezer part, the the uh, thermostat here, and it solved the problem. So I didn't think much of it at the time, because maybe it was I don't know where it was setting. It's on five now, but I don't know where it was uh, when she called. But you could see the the brown thing here that they're supposed to be, well, I guess economically best position is there but whatever she did it fixed the problem so be it uh and it probably didn't because like i was saying cause and effect because those things haven't been cleaned in 10 years <laughs> it probably overworked things and uh like i said I, i'm gonna make a few moves here to see if i'm correct but the cause was the dirty coils or dirty heat exchangers the effect was it affected something in the freezer which i just learned on youtube the freezer feeds the refrigerator. So, let me get my tools back out because I slid this thing back in here thinking, yeah, it's got to be the dirty, the dirty going on back there, but nope. Uh, so, I'm going to get my tools back out and I'm thinking probably the same tool. I don't know what size those, uh, those bolts are, but that's the only tool I took everything apart so far. So, let me get these, uh, these racks out of here because I'm going to be taking this thing completely down to where I can see the, uh, I don't even know what it's called, condenser, you know, there's some coils back there. I'm assuming that they're frozen solid. All right, so with the ice maker removed and the shelves, this is what it looks like. And my plan is to take all these bolts off to get everything exposed. I'm not sure if I have to take this ice maker off, maybe to get this mechanism off. I don't know. This might have to come off. I don't know. I'm just going to start taking things apart and investigating. And these, uh, I don't believe these would have to come off, but maybe they do. They're Phillips, it looks like, because if I have to pull this panel back, I don't know if it's going to squeeze by there. Probably not. So I'm just going to go ahead and take, start taking everything apart. I just want to show you where I'm getting at, but that's filthy down there, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> Some kind of grime, but now I'm looking. I can see that it's completely caked up with ice, and I'm thinking that's probably not supposed to be caked up with ice. And all this dirtiness going on down there, uh, it's probably because it just ain't been clean in 10 years, but I see a lot of rust forming, so it does look dry though. So I'm assuming still something's clogged, so I got to get to the bottom of it. So that's the next move here, and I got to hurry because I don't want anything spoiled in the freezer, even though I put ice box in there. So I'm not going to film the actual taking this apart, but I am just telling you this is what it looks like right now. In about two minutes, it's going to look a little different. All right, so this is what we're looking like now. That one panel removed, and now we can see the fan, which I know works. I could I heard that earlier. Um, and I don't think it's got anything to do with it, but this is what it looks like with this panel removed. It's just the four bolts and the electrical connector comes through here. You just pinch the sides and they pop through. And, uh, this tube that was on here is, uh, over here. Same thing. You just, uh, think, yeah, I think it's this. Yep. Oh, here it is. You just push on this. The way that's plugged in, there's no bolts to it. Just push on the bottom. I think this is on the bottom, B bottom or push or pull, whatever I did, came right out. And this was in the top right corner, just the one bolt. I took that off first before I can remove this, and I believe you have to remove this because it overlaps uh, the bottom one. So I'm gonna have to get rid of this light mechanism. It's probably the same thing. I mean, so far it's just been one tool and using your hands to take this thing apart, but it looks like it's just the two bolts left. Might even have to remove the, uh, the light. Gotta get a light in here. Yeah, I could probably just unplug it from right there, or, I don't know, we'll see what happens, but it, I can see this whole thing is frozen back here, so let me keep going. All right, so the second panel's gone. Uh, the light was easy. I just unplugged it from the back, took the uh, lens off, so this is what we're looking at here. And I have a feeling this is what the problem is, but what I really thought it was, but you see this drain down here? I thought that would be clogged, but it appears to be open, but I'm going to get rid of all this ice, uh, clean this up. And then we'll go from there. I think it's just locked up solid with ice. And it's not allowing to do its uh, function, right? 
I don't know why the defrost doesn't work, but I'm going to have to locate wherever the, the heater is for the defrost and uh, test that. So clearly the defrost function on this is not working. And uh, like I said, a couple weeks ago, the wife said that the refrigerator, the freezer part here was uh, warm and a lot of water seeping out, you know, the walls, everything was uh, leaking. So maybe it's got something to do with it. I don't know, but let me get this ice off of here. All right, so I got things defrosted. Now I can see things, and uh, that paint there—that's just paint. Those things that look like potato chips. <laughs> so I don't know if it's because I got hard water or whatever caused that to flake like that. But uh, so now I want to see if this why this coil is not working, and uh, everything looks okay because this uh, thermostat up here, and I'm not sure what that gray packet of C4 is for, <laughs> but everything looks fine in here, other than this mess I got going on. So I have to um, get this thing into frost mode and see if this thing's actually working or maybe look up some stats and unplug something, see what the resistance is supposed to be. But that's my next move to see why this thing is not defrosting. And uh, some things I'm learning on YouTube is that uh, there's a timer involved, which I believe is in the refrigerator part of this. And uh, there's a way, uh, possibly, I don't know, you know, what the model I was looking at on YouTube, but that we can engage this uh, defrost mode because it's not like your old grandmother's uh, refrigerator that ha actually has the defrost button. <laughs> These are automatic. So we're going to have to go in here and I think it's probably, uh, uh, you know, the timer up in here somewhere because I'm, I'm, now I'm thinking it's either a timer that turns this, uh, as I'm learning, that turns this uh, coil on, like an oven coil to defrost this. Clearly this thing wasn't defrosted in quite some time. And uh, that's my next move. <laughs> All right, so when I was under there cleaning, I remember seeing this uh, tech sheet under here and uh, I didn't grab it down. I just opened the things back up and grabbed it now because this, uh, you know, as far as this, uh, why it's not defrosting, uh, like I said, I can do a check, a resistance check to see if the coil's good. And uh, then I was thinking about the thermostat there, this, this, this still hick here, but everything looks good and I don't want to start getting in anything. So then the next thing I was like, how do you defrost this thing to see, you know, then you could check your coil, just touch it, see if it's getting hot. And uh, cause I don't want to get into the timer or the adaptive timer, whatever they call it. There's no way to manually just go to defrost right here. So I was just looking through this uh, tech sheet and uh, apparently there is. So, what was it? Adaptive defrost control. So it's automatic. Uh, it tells when you know when when to defrost and when not to. So look, apparently every four hours the thing's supposed to come on and off. Uh, but then I saw to force defrost, turn cold control on and off three times within six seconds. A force defrost is immediate without delay regardless of the cold you know just so the, the the coil should get start getting hot immediately uh so that's what we're going to do now i got to plug the thing in and uh then we're just going to check see if the actual coil is good if the coil is well let me before i get ahead of myself let me let me plug it in and try that first so actually this ice is working pretty good it's keeping things cool so how to uh, manually force defrost mode so we can look at that uh, coil down there is just um, freezer mode. Go up here and go between cold and off three times within six seconds. One, two, three. That is stone cold still. So there is a uh, thermostat defrost uh, resistance uh, mode so I can get the the ohm meter and if it's above 42 it's just supposed to be open and below 12 degrees Fahrenheit it should be closed so that could be a easy uh, check to do thermostat we could check we can take this uh, clip off and do that resistance check because it's clearly above 45 now it should be open All right, here's where I'm at with this. So this uh, circuit board lives in uh, in the fridge there. I'll show you in a second. Uh, I didn't open it up yet, but the wires come through to the freezer. And uh, so there are some checks here we can do, which I already did. And I'm kind of glad 
oh well I'm, I'm not 100% I gotta do a few more checks but L1 to L2 that's obvious you know whether the, the, the refrigerator works it's just the heating element doesn't work so there's some things we can do to check that so coming from this motherboard or I say motherboard the circuit board for the uh, defrost uh, we'll call it the timer defrost timer in this case it's not a manual deal it's a circuit board but from there sending a signal every four hours or whatever it is you should have uh, so CC to L2 CC is blue and L2 is white so the blue wire and the white wire and I'll show you in a sec on the fridge uh, should have line voltage present when uh, basically when a thing's in defrost and we can put it in manual defrost and I'm I just did the measurement and it does do it so so prior to putting this in defrost mode CC to L2 blue and white does not have any line voltage on it when you put it in defrost mode it does have line voltage so it tells me that the circuit card the uh, ADC card whatever you want to call it the defrost control is sending the signal from there uh, you know so now I'm in between whether it's the thermostat or the actual heating element and I'm thinking it's a thermostat because I went from stat to L2 the line voltage should be present in defrost mode and it's not so that should tell me right there that it is the defrost which stat to l2 what is that stat oh my glasses and stat is orange yeah orange and white wire the, the thermostat is orange and the white wire is uh you know the common and then uh that should be present there's no voltage present when the thing is in uh defrost mode so i'm thinking it's the that little 15 dollar part well here's what i'm going to do here's what i was talking about too let me show you in here so I made some checks, so it's starting to cool down again, and this refrigerator will work for a while until this uh, thing freezes up again. But so this is this these wires I just unplugged them, but that goes at a coil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put direct 120 on this uh, heating element, and if that heating element works, then it narrows it down to this guy, this little uh, thermostat deal. And I made the measurements here. That's what all those poke holes are for, because <laughs> uh, I don't want to cut it yet. But the measurements from here. Uh, orange to well, it was orange to white so I'm leaning towards I say leaning it's got to be this guy even though there's no physical evidence of this thing being you know broken or or whatever uh, and I'm also going to do a check on that so I'm going to uh, put power to this see if that element heats up I'm also going to put power to this see if I can hear any uh, switches like a solenoid going back and forth and uh, if I don't, I, you know, I'm 100% sure it'd be, it'd be this. I'm almost 99% sure it's this right now. But let me do them final checks. So I'll cut these four wires and then test the heater core, which is important because if it's a heater core, that's going to be an issue. This is, uh, is going to be problematic to fix. No, you, you, you know, problematic for me because by the time I get the heater core or the heater element, who knows how much that is. I'll probably just buy a new fridge at that point if it is the... Uh, element but i don't think it is i'm almost 100 percent sure it's this based on my measurements so that's how i'm going to check these so i, I am going to clip these uh, give me enough room to uh, you know install the new one so that's that and then uh the orange let's have it let me see your dikes here I'm gonna test that to see if that uh, I'll put some uh, I'll put 120 volts right to it or I'll look up see what it takes I think it is a direct direct uh, input 120 see if this makes any noise if it doesn't it's that and uh, I'm also gonna cut these two and repair them later so I can test the element just for uh, for me as far as one I want to be 100% sure that this element works so I'm going to use, I'll strip the wires here, and uh, I have a cord that I'll plug into the wall, pigtail them together, plug it in, that thing should start heating up, right? Alright, so what I've got here is uh, just a lead cord, uh, and uh, the pigtail just wired right to 120, and I'm going to plug it at, right into the element, this goes right into the element. If the element gets hot, then obviously it's this fella here. I'm going to go plug this cord in. Either you're going to hear a big boom <laughs> or uh, the, the element is going to 
start heating up. Let's see. Because this is, well, I can already see it smoking. Yeah, it's already getting warm. So, I uh, already see the steam. So the element is fine. It's starting to steam. This will melt all the ice. Uh, so I know the element's good, and this is the hard part. The, the, the more expensive part, and the hardest part of the job, whether out of the three, the circuit board, this element, or that little thermostat switch. So I'm glad it's the thermostat switch. Let me go and plug this, because I gotta get this food cool again. All right, so there's one last check I wanna do, and I gotta be careful on this part, because um, the thing's still plugged in. So I wanna check this piece, right? And uh, so, let's see here. Let's not touch the two together. So I'm assuming, because I don't know, uh, that uh, this thing is gonna click or do something, right? Uh, when there's 120 applied to it, and I don't know if it has to come from the circuit board or not, I'm just uh, doing whatever. And I was reading in here that there's a resistance check you can do, which uh, it says it should be open. And I did the resistance. Uh, when, when it's a, above 42 degrees, this should be open. And I did, there's some resistance on this. I think it was, um, I forgot what it was, five, six ohms or something like that, but it should be open. And then when it gets below seven degrees, something like that, it should be uh, closed. Of course, I'm not gonna put it in the freezer because I know this is the part, but I just, do, I wanna apply power to it just to see if this thing uh, does make a noise. So, I didn't hear anything. I got a washing machine going, but. I don't hear anything clicking. I don't know if they're supposed to click. I can't see what I'm doing, but. Um, so I'm assuming this thing is bad. Oh, there she blows. 60 bucks for the sucker. That's the part number. It's a factory deal from uh, Whirlpool. Uh, I see them cheaper on Amazon. Well, I got it on Amazon, but cheaper on Amazon. What looks the same, but apparently there's a different temperature control on off and stuff. I'm sure the cheap seven dollar one would work, maybe, maybe not. Sixty dollars, I seen seven dollar ones, twenty dollar ones. Uh, so, anyways, I ended up getting getting with the part number uh, that was on the uh, on this on that uh, that stat sheet there. I forgot where it was, but uh, that's the part number. Okay, so I got everything. Uh, uh, tied together. There was the two orange together, right? This plugs into the heater and uh, Probably should have been a good idea to turn the Turn the fridge off. I gotta have, use two hands, but I wired it with the fridge on Nothing went work. Um, so I think it was just once I plugged that in. I think this fella here was in the back Just uh, kind of clipped on the back there I'm gonna leave that there. I plugged that in there, and I think everything was just zip tied, zip tied to probably this piece of tape or whatever that is, plastic. So I'll do that. I'll plug this in, zip tie everything up, and I'll see if this thing works. And we'll go ahead and put it in defrost mode. That's a light, and uh, see if this bugger works. All right, so I just turned it on, and uh, we'll wait till stuff gets frosty a little bit. Shouldn't take long, and then I'll hit the defrost mode and see if this element down here gets hot. Right now it's cold. And uh, I can feel these getting cold, so it shouldn't be long. Oops. All right, so I let it cool down. I just put it in, uh, I don't know if you can see that smoke in there. That thing is uh, working. So it's just a thermostat. So I just did the old one, two, three times on the cold to, uh, <laughs> um, you know, we did there would be a freezer control. You go on or from cold to off, cold to off, cold to off three times within six seconds, and we have steam. I just touched it and I burned my finger, so it's hot, <laughs> it's working, and it's fixed. So let me bolt this thing back up. Uh, so that was a good diagnosis, easy to do. Um, I don't know if you can see that smoke, but. All right, so there you have it, folks. So it's been, uh, I think, a week now, and 
the thing is working fine. So it just happened to be, uh, I just grabbed the part, a simple thermostat part, which uh, as you saw, was pretty, pretty easy to diagnose, pretty easy to do. So uh, just for it, well, this one was pretty expensive, but I've seen these on uh, Amazon for uh, half or nothing. Some of them were, like I said, $7. Some of them were 25 bucks. This sucker happened to be 60 bucks from uh, Whirlpool. And I know this is a Maytag, but apparently Whirlpool makes makes these fellas. And uh, it's the same part for Whirlpool or Maytag or several other things. I think I saw a Kenmore in there. Anyway, the, the part number cross reference to a few things. But anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I uh, just saved a couple bucks by, well, A, not calling a Maytag man, but uh, B, I don't have to get a new fridge. All because of this little fella. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.